So in this video, we're going to talk about the graph of the cosine function, okay? So similar to what we did for, for the graph of the sine function, we're going to make a table. So we're going to have x values, and we're going to have our output, the y value, the cosine. So when x is 0, the cosine of 0 is 1. When x is pi over 3, the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. Um, when uh, x is pi over 2, the cosine is 0. 2 pi over 3 gets me a negative 1 half. And then pi gets me um, negative 1. And then I'm going to keep going. Let's see, 4 pi over 3 gets me negative 1 half. Uh, 3 pi over 2 gets me 0. And then 5 pi over 3 gets me 1 half. And 2 pi gets me back. Let me get back over here. 2 pi gets me back to 1. All right, so if I was going to graph this, what would it look like? Right, so our period looks like to get full circle, all we need to do is go 2 pi. Okay, so if I mark this through, so pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi here, and so that's at 0. So when sine is, or when when x is 0, cosine is 1, so I'm going to start right here at the top at 1. Then I'm going to end up working my way down to negative 1. But when I start, as my x increases, my output decreases until we get down to pi. So at pi over 3, I'm looking about right here. I'm at 1 half. Pi over 2, I'm at 0. Um, 2 pi over 3, I'm at negative 1 half, and then at pi, I'm down to negative 1. So what's happening here? I'm working my way down until I get right there, okay? So that's the low point at pi comma negative 1. That's the high point up here is at 0 comma um, 1, okay? And now what's going to happen? Well... Um, when I plug in 4 pi over 3, I go up to negative 1 half, and then 3 pi over 2, I'm getting up to 0, and then, you know, it starts to go over again. Uh, 5 pi over 3, I get to the 1 half mark, and then I top out at 1 here. So at 2 pi, I top out at 1. And so and then the cycle, as you can see, this cycle runs through here. And if I duplicate this, then you can see that this continues on and on forever and ever. You know, however you um, want to extend out, okay? So just like the sign in the same way of the extension. So what do I know? Um, well, properties, the domain, the domain here is all real numbers. Any value I can think of, I can plug in for X and it outputs a Y value, a cosine of that real number. Now the range is restricted, just like the sine function. The, the range, it's stuck between negative 1 and 1. It just keeps bouncing between those two values. Negative 1 and 1, inclusive. Um, cosine function is an even function. So it's an even function. What does an even function mean? That means that f of x is equal to f of negative x. So if I plug in a uh, pi over 3 here, then a negative pi over 3 
will get me the same output over on the other side. Okay, so both of those give me a positive one-half value output. So if I plug in the negative of it or the positive of that x, then I still get the same output function value. That's what it means to be even. Okay? Um, the only trigonometric functions that are even are the cosine and the reciprocal of cosine, which is the secant. All the other trigonometric functions are odd functions, so maybe that helps a little bit. So even just means symmetric about the y-axis. Okay, so maybe that's helpful too for you. All right, so the cosine's periodic. We talked about that, it's periodic. Um, two pi is your is your period for the cosine. Now intercepts, do we cross the x-axis anywhere? Sure do, we cross the x-axis infinitely many times, right? Where do we cross the x-axis? X-intercepts are located at uh, pi over two. And then what do we do to get to the next one? We just add pi, uh, odd multiples of pi over two. So three pi over two, five pi over two, and keep going. Same thing going the other way, negative pi over two, negative three pi over two, and forever and ever going that way, okay? If, since it's a even function, if the positive is a, is a root, an x-intercept, then the negative of that same number is an x-intercept. So like this one, that means there's also a negative 5 pi over 2 in the dot, dot, dots. Okay? Maximum values. We obtain maximums that looks like 0 and pi over 2. Okay? So uh, max values occur. So max values are at multiples of two pi k, okay? Where k is an integer. Okay, so like zero, two pi, four pi, six pi, so on but also going the other way, negative two pi, negative four pi, and forever and ever that way. Minimum values, do we reach minimums? Yes, we do. We reach minimums at odd multiples of pi. Okay, so minimum values are um, for odd, so two k plus one pi, Okay, so that's like pi, three pi, five pi, and so on, but also like negative pi and everything going back this way too. Okay, so minimum values at negative, a uh, value of negative one, maximum values a value of one. All right, so that kind of summarizes your cosine graph there for you. Uh, let's change colors, and I want to talk about um, graphing um, cosines of the form y equals a cosine omega x. Okay, so, so say I wanted to graph something like this. Maybe I wanted to graph y equals 2 cosine 3x. Okay, using transformations... Well, let's start with y equal to the cosine of x. Okay, y equal to the cosine of x, and then we'll go from there. So let's graph this. Um, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi. Okay, I'm going to make three copies of this. Maybe this is gonna help out here. All right, so this is my cosine graph. So cosine at one and it comes down. 
So we're gonna come down to here and then we're gonna bottom out at negative one. And then we're gonna come back up and then we're gonna top out right here. So critical values here, so two pi comma one, pi comma negative one, and zero comma one here. All right, um, now, the second part, you know, what are we doing here? We're graphing two cosine three X. So what I wanna do is I want to multiply by two. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do another one. Uh, let's do it in green. So Y equals two cosine X. So what does two cosine X do to all the points? It doubles them, okay? So instead of going up to one, it's gonna go up to two. Instead of going down to negative one, it's gonna go down to negative two, all right? So now this first value, instead of being at 01, it's at 02. And then it's still gonna come down here because look, if I pass through at zero, it doesn't matter if I multiply two times zero, I still get zero. I'm still having the same x-intercept here, okay? What's changing is the amplitude, how far we are up, how far we go down. So that's what, that's gonna be um, pi comma negative two, okay? And then I'm gonna come back up and then I'm gonna reach out right here. So looks something like that. So you can't really tell it from that graph, but Take really what this is kind of looking like if I put them on the same graph, this is what it would look like, okay? You can tell that this is, um, the valleys are deeper and the hills are steeper, right? So, so that two in front here kind of messes with the amplitude, okay? The severity of the curve going on here. All right, so that's two pi comma two there. Now, um, the last step we've got here, we've got a um, three X factor going on. So that means that we're gonna get through this cycle three times faster than we normally would get through the cycle. Okay, so this cycle is gonna like, right, it's gonna, it's gonna blow through three times faster. Okay, so, so when I replace the X, let me do a different color, let's do red. So when I replace the X with a three X, now the two here, what did that do? That was a vertical stretch, stretch. Okay, by factor of two. Now, this three X inside replacing X with three X is a horizontal compression. Okay, it's a horizontal compression um, by a factor of one third. Okay, so it's gonna get it's gonna go through the whole period in one third the time. Okay, one third the x needed to get through it. So what does that mean? Instead of taking pi units to get through the cycle, now we're only gonna need to take pi over three units to get down to that low peak here. So, so this pi over three, okay? So if this is one and this is two, what's happening is we're coming down and we're gonna get to the bottom here well before we even get um, to pi over two, okay? so. 
Whereas this one, we were only at zero. Now we're already down. So at pi over three, we're down to negative two here, even though we started up here at zero comma two, okay? And then we, we work our way um, back up. We work our way back up. And by the time we get to um, pi over 2, okay, so we're going to end up crossing right back through here, and then we work our way back up here. Now, to get to this point here, that's one third of that. So this value here is two pi over three. Okay, see we took we took that we got there in three times the speed. Okay, so as you can see, it took this curve here. So let's see if I can connect all this. We'll see if this works or not. Yeah, that didn't work. Okay. Let me do this. I'll do one continuous. Now I'll copy it. So you can see here that in the time that it takes to get to the 2 pi, we actually did the cycle three times now. That's what that compression does to it. Okay, so pretty, pretty intense compression going on here. All right, cool. So um, one thing to note, the sine and cosine graphs are very similar. Okay, very similar. So what do I mean? So I got pi over two, pi, 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi, and then up to 1 here, and down to negative 1 here. Now, with sine, sine of x, at 0, it's 0. And then by the time it works up to pi over 2, it's up here, and then by the time it gets back to pi, it's back to zero, and then it's down to negative one, and then it's back up. So I connect the dots. It looks like this here. Okay, that's sine of x. So y equals sine of x. Now, y equals cosine of x starts at one, okay? And by the time I get to pi over two, I'm at zero, and the time I get to pi, I'm at negative one, but by the time I get back to three pi over two, I'm at zero again, and then right here, I work my way back up. And so when I look at this curve, it comes down, and then it comes back up, and then there again. Now, these curves are very similar. Okay, so I'm gonna duplicate this. Oh, maybe I should think about how I'm duplicating. Let me duplicate it from over here. Okay. And then let me do the same thing. I'm gonna duplicate this one here, continue it out. All right, so the, that's the sine curve. Now, now one thing that's interesting, okay, so say I took this cosine curve here, right? And I moved it. Oh, that did not do what I wanted to do. Let me try this one more time. Okay. And I shifted it over. What do you see happening? Well, if I had drawn this a little better, it would be overlapping, right? But you see, if I shift it, all I have to do is shift it pi over two units and now I have the same graph. I've got the sine graph on top of the cosine graph, okay? So something very interesting going on here, all right? What this is telling me is that the sine of x 
is equal to the cosine of x. And then if I shift it to the right, okay, pi over two units. Okay, so shift it to the right, pi over two units, then those two things are equal to each other. So because of this relationship, the graphs of the functions of the form um, y equal a sine omega x and y equal a cosine omega x are referred to simply as the sinusoidal sinusoidal graphs, okay? So basically, the only difference between sine and cosine is we're shifting our graph pi over two units, okay? So we're, we're literally taking the cosine graph and shifting it from pi over two to pi, okay? So we're shifting to the right 90 degrees. All right, cool.